this is the Colaben LED backlight, and this is, well, it says Immersion LED TV backlight, and this is a device that's used to add uh, some color around your flat screen to give you um, this mood immersion that extends beyond your, your the image that is on your television. Now, I'll, some... Uh, some models of television, I'm thinking like LG and a couple of other ha um, models of flat screen had this built into the actual units, uh, but those are pretty rare and it, those were expensive at the time. This is an add-on modification uh, to any existing television to give you those that feature. And this is put out by a company, Colaben, and I don't seem to see any of their branding on this device at all other than it says Colaben on the uh, barcode in the back. But, um, you know, they set it out to me for testing and evaluation, so we're going to do that. Let's see what's inside. We have a user manual, camera screen sync controller manual in English. And, huh. This looks like all about instructions on using it with a uh, app for your phone. I'm guessing that's what Tuya is. It must be a downloadable app. Yep, a download app for iOS or Android. But it doesn't have any instructions on how to install this itself. Let's see if it has anything underneath. No. At the, nope, no, it doesn't have anything either. So. I'm going to figure this out. It shouldn't be too difficult, um, but I'll show you, you know, what I did to install this, obviously. And let's take a look at what the components are. We have our LED strip here. Interestingly enough, this is on a 10 millimeter reel here. For those of us who are old enough to remember uh, reels, this is a, f a film reel or a magnetic tape reel. Um, for those even for us who are even older uh, than uh, Gen X, this was um, for Gen Xers. This was used at schools to put on an eight millimeter film onto a projector. Uh, this was well before uh, digital um, dig digital TV uh, at school, so we could watch films. Uh, but for those, uh, this, is, this is the same design that would be used for magnetic audio tape. And this is way, way old, where people would listen to audio uh, on a big machine and with two reels, and you'd put the magnetics um, tape through here. Anyway, that's, it's interesting that they're using basically the same form factor for these LED strips. You can see all the electronics and the LEDs on here, and they all fit in. Um, less than 10 millimeters wide. So this also connects via a USB-A connector here and that connects to our control unit and camera. This is the control unit here. It has appears to have two USB-A ports and if I read correctly online, you can basically doesn't get, tell you which is which. I think you can put it into e any one of them. Um, it is Alexa and Google Home compatible, and there's a serial number, but I don't, I'm don't. i not going to show you that because I don't have either of those devices, so uh, that's kind of moot. But you don't need either of them to control this device. This is the actual camera to the, to the um, control unit itself. This uh, hangs above or mounts above your, your television, and this camera looks at your TV screen and um, translates that into different colors that will be output while connected while connected uh, to the LED strip and um, change the colors around it. And this is your power. Here we've got, we have a power supply over here. Oh, and we have some 3M clips. So you would use these to clip onto the back of your television to clip your um, the LED strip to the back of your television. And this is your power that goes to the unit, goes to a wall plug. So that's pretty straightforward. And it does have a, three, a 3M uh, adhesive strip on the back here to attach that to your television. So, oh, and don't forget to take off this uh, protective film here, uh, if you can get that to focus. Yeah, uh, take off that protective film before using this because otherwise it could, I mean, your, your, the camera is not going to look at your TV clearly. Anyway, um, let's take this over to the TV and figure out how it all assembles. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have cleaned uh, the back of your television. Just take a damp cloth and wipe off any dust or grime or what have you so you have a nice clean surface to work with. 
Next, you want to take your reel that has your LED strip on it and then carefully unwind it. It should come into four different sections, each separated by a, um, a cable. And these correspond, there we go, there's the first section. This corresponds to a corner. So you want to find the long section and the short sections. The short sections will go on your vertical and the long sections will go on your the horizontal on uh, your television. And the corner pieces will obviously correspond to the corner. Now depending on the size of your, per your particular screen, you may need to put these either closer or further in from the edge. The strips also have a adhesive backer on them, so you can attach them directly. Now what you want to do, obviously, is to have the, your USB cord positioned in such a way as you can reach the center of uh, the top of your screen. Because this is where you're going to be placing your, your control unit, so you want to approximate where it's going to be. Just know where you're going to have it so that you can reach it with a USB cable and still have enough slack that uh, you can position your strip. Now, one of the tricky things is that a lot of televisions will have all their main control systems at the bottom. So when you're trying to place this, you're going to have to figure out where you can place this on the lower back of your 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 monitor, your uh, TV, so that it doesn't block any ports. You install the LED strip sections by peeling back the adhesive strip on the back of the LEDs and pressing them onto the back of your television. And the installation process is going to vary depending on the shape and type of television you have. This is a 65 inch LG mounted to my wall and you might have a different make or model, um, different size and it might be mounted to a wall or a stand or have feet. And while I figure this out on my TV, this would be a good time for you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you're watching this, you're getting something out of it. Please hit like and subscribe. Not only does it help me out, but it helps you out because you're telling the algorithm what kind of content you actually like to watch. So the AI will start suggesting more videos like this instead of the most popular search topic on Google, unless you're into K-pop. Now once you attach the sections, you want to attach these little 3M clips that come in the box. This is to secure the corner sections so they don't pull away from your television. So here's a little bit of a problem here. Because of the design of this camera, it doesn't seem to, to work well with a very flat topped flat screen because when you place it up here, the camera is facing out and not the screen itself. So, all right, I think I've MacGyvered a possible solution here and just using some household Legos. So I've placed this here and hopefully this will provide enough of a ledge of a sandwich. Uh, I've put some, du some uh, double stick tape on the inside there so that it will sort of clamp onto and adhere to the back of uh, my flat screen. So we'll see how this works. And that didn't quite work, but I figured out something else. All right, so I made a little bit of a hack here. I put some double stick tape onto the front of the device. That way I could hang it behind a TV screen. Now, I wish they would have designed this to actually articulate or in some way attach to just your typical modern flat screen. So I think this is a uh, significant design failure on the uh, maker's part, but you know, you can make it work. You just have to be a little ingenious with uh, how you position and uh, solve your problems. All right, we have power. Plugged it in and it is calibrating. So once you have it set up and uh, your Wi-Fi connected to your phone and to the device, you'll go through the setup screen and you want to let it know how you wired your LEDs to the camera. And then you want to turn, make sure that the TV is turned off and you should be able to see if all things are connected properly. You should see what the camera is seeing on your smartphone. So tell it that the screen is off and then turn on your screen and you should put something on that um, is uh, fairly stable in terms of what, what it's seeing. In this case, this is a screensaver and 
tell it that the screen is on and if all things go correctly, there we go, it is actually syncing to what it is seeing on screen in terms of the color. So this is the TV without LEDs. And this is with the LED system on. And this is the multicolor mode, which is the sort of default starting mode. There's also a mono color mode and quite a few other modes. Some of them quite garish or um, fun, depending on your point of view. These are different color themes or moods that you could find on the app. And there are musical theme modes that utilizes the unit's built-in microphone to listen for musical or audio beats. So a lot of fun at parties or karaoke at home, but if you have any sort of epileptic seizures, I'd probably stay away from that mode. So, the Coloban LED backlight system. If you're interested in picking one up, you can find links in the video description or on my blog at moondogindustries.com. And definitely use those links because it helps support this channel. And you can support this channel for free by just hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.